Okay, so how is this possible? Well, it's actually pretty easy and we're going to get through it step by step. So just follow along, you really don't need to know anything about AI. It's just a basic introduction. First of all, we need to set up the scene. We place a ground, some walls, all really basic shapes. It doesn't have to look pretty or anything, it just has to work right now. We can always make it prettier later um, if we feel the need to it. Then we need the basic mechanics. We need to start simple here again. If we start too complex, the training time will be really long and if we still have any bugs in our code left, it could take us hours to find out. So we start as simple as possible here. This means the player can just move on one axis. So in our case, he can only move forward or backward, no left and right. This should do plenty for now. So this is the movement part. Now to the throwing. A throw in our case consists of three parts. A y direction, an x direction and a force. What the AI has to do in order to succeed is to balance all of those three parameters perfectly to hit the chord. And if you think about it, that's actually not that easy. So it's plenty of work to do for, for our AI and definitely enough for the beginning. So this works out. Perfect. So far we have defined what is called the action space in machine learning. But there's also another space and that's called the observation space. Here we have to think about what the agent sees. It's really important to only include the information that is really necessary. If we include any information that is not relevant for the goal, the training time will just increase by a lot. And that's really no good. So we have to think really carefully what the agent needs to know and what he needs to see. On the other hand, if we include too little information, the agent could never ever perform as good as we want. So you have to be really careful and it's a precise balance act. In our case, it's pretty simple. If you really think about it, the only thing the agent really needs to know is how far it is from the court. If he is one meter away, 10 meters away, nothing more, nothing less. This is really nice for us because it will keep the training time really short. Okay, now we know what the agent sees and what he can do. The last thing we need to define is his goal, which is pretty obvious in our case because it's just the goal. So that's good, we can start the training now. It will be completely random at first. Every time the agent throws, we move him to a new position. In this way, we can shuffle the data set. This is a really, really important step because it makes it so the agent isn't just memorizing, but actually generalizing, which is definitely what we want. Also, the game is sped up, which obviously decreases the training time. So let's see how our agent performs. <laughs> 